So we went digging through Reddit to find some of the most terrifying stories to tell you guys and we ended up finding five that are completely bone chilling. There was one that like creeped me out so bad that I was like, okay, I don't think I'm gonna even ever go back to this one. We have a special message for you and this is mm -hmm. gonna be our first ever live event at Magic Valley Ball in Twin Falls, Idaho that we'll be doing of a live podcast episode mm -hmm. for our Scaredy Cats podcast. So if any of you guys wanna meet us in person, we would absolutely love that. We'll be there on October 28th at 1 p.m. is when the event starts. We're really excited. It's gonna be super fun and we're gonna be telling a really, really scary story. If you're interested in our podcast as well, it is true crime and it'll all be linked in the description. It's literally anywhere you listen to podcasts on, we'll be on it. But with all that being said, let's dive in to story number one. I did write down mostly all these stories and this one is called, It Wasn't a Little Girl. Sounds creepy already. So she was camping with her husband and his family at a small remote lake in New Mexico. There was about 10 people in our group and another group of six people in the next campsite. It was nighttime and both groups were doing typical activities, making s'mores, having a few drinks and telling stories when all of a sudden they heard a sound that sounded like a little girl yelling for help. Neither group had children with them so they were all kind of thinking like what the heck is this? They were all positive that they were hearing the little girl and decided to search the area where they heard the noises from together. There was a field behind their campsite. They saw a very tall pure white figure standing maybe a hundred feet away from them in the field making the noises so it was this tall white figure that mm -hmm. kind of reminded me when i heard the story of slenderman so they all agreed that this thing looked maybe six feet tall skinny and white as can be as they made their way closer to investigate whatever it was that they saw they started backing off as soon as they got closer and then it disappeared into the trees all night they continued to hear a little girl calling for help as they tried to sleep to be like sleeping and then throughout yeah. the whole night just hearing a little girl calling out for help is terrifying i wonder if it was like trying to um um, like trap them. Honestly, that's why I don't like going camping. You can yeah. hear some weird stuff, especially like this story. So this next one is called Death Came For Him. For this one, we're gonna be popping out the glasses because <laughs> I cannot read. Like, I can't focus if I don't have my glasses. But here's how the story goes. I was standing in my parents' room talking to my very sick dad at the time. He was dying of stage four esophageal cancer. I got the feeling something was behind me. I looked towards the doorway in the living room and something about four, six and fully black is peeking through the corner <gasps> what the heck four six that's like a like a tiny being Kid. that would be so scary guys the goosebumps that i would get throughout my whole body would be like i'd probably pass out i would too it was peeking around the corner with his hands on the door frame i ran towards it and it slipped back around the door when i got outside the doorway there was nothing my dad was completely confused when i stepped back inside the room when i told him people who stayed at the house in my dad's final days claimed to have seen it my mom saw the figure on multiple occasions in multiple different places until he passed away and we haven't seen it since and the, the title's death came for him so like yeah. do they think it was like kind of like a grim reaper kind of deal i don't know there's oh, this thing know. that he does that makes you so mad but he'll take oh, off yeah. his glasses and he'll peek around the corner like that it'll just be like literally like half my head yeah. and i scared her so bad once like, guys bad. That like my heart hurt so bad he even did that to my little brother he's done yeah, it to my little sister I did it to everybody it looks scary when he does that but when he when you said that part it yeah, reminded me of that scary. when you do that did death really come for him let us know what you guys think in the comments for story number three it's called the walking dead this lady says she's a psychiatric nurse and early in my career i worked at a residential mental health facility one of her residents was an elective mute which means that he didn't wouldn't or couldn't talk there were no medical reasons as to why one night he vanished he was declared awol and eventually he was declared missing and dead 10 years later a seven foot tall man walked into the hospital emergency room in my part of the midwest and said to the receptionist my name is marion dutchen and i've been dead for 10 years which is not the real name you know it's a fake name he was covered with dust and he was wearing the same clothes he'd been reported to be wearing the night he vanished they were able to identify him i guess via fingerprints the family was notified but they said they had already grieved his loss and whomever it was was claiming to be him simply could not be they demanded not to be contacted again so they confirmed his identity through fingerprints and it was 10 years later after he vanished so this is a long time and if he was wearing the same clothes yeah. him to be confirmed that it actually is him and the family to be like you know don't contact us that's pretty odd too that is weird it says marion paced all day every day moving his mouth that looked like talking or muttered but no sound came out he had an unnerving habit of throwing his head back with his mouth wide open as if he were laughing heartily but not even a breath could be heard if i talked to him he appeared to listen periodically throwing his head back in the laughter mimicking way of his on my last day at the job, the last thing I saw was Marion pacing in the parking lot, throwing his head back to laugh. Later, I wonder if all along I'd been dealing with the ghost. All these years later, I still don't know. 
I don't know how people could like work at mental health hospitals. It's like a, it's not, a nothing, lot. Yeah. you know, against the people that are there, but it's just like it's scary, especially like the how they're describing like throwing their head back and opening his mouth like if he's laughing but nothing's coming out. Seeing that would be terrifying. It'd be really nerve-wracking. Guys, and while we're saying these stories, comment down below which one scared you the most. But this next one is called the Demon's Room. We're outside and it's starting yeah. to get like gloomier and I feel like ugh. I worked as a forensic nurse in a hospital locked up in unit. We had one older lady who swore she was being haunted and abused by a demon she would call and we're not gonna say the full name just in case i'm just gonna call it tib but i'm gonna pull the full thing in the in the in the video for you guys so many crazy things happened while she was on the unit we'd go into the room do normal care leave and seconds later she'd start screaming bloody murder we'd run into the room to find her looking like she's been in a fight with a boxing champ bloody lips black eyes markings all over her body and no one ever saw her doing this stuff to herself see you guys so, i pulled this story but i didn't even read the whole thing so that's so weird. i wonder if like this ghost because i know there's like like demonic entities that are literally like beat you down and like bruise you up and get you to like your weakest stage so they can do like their possession basically. yeah take over your body because yeah. you're most vulnerable things would get often moved around the room by themselves at one point she was in a protective restraint because the doctor thought that she was hurting herself there was no way she could have moved or done anything to herself while in this restraint but new marks would always appear or her tray slash cart would be across the room when she was asked or questioned she said it was Tib. After she was discharged, we would always have trouble in that room. One night, a guard reported lights blinking on and off, and it was that specific room. They need to get that room blessed. The strangest thing about this stuff is that, imagine being the person, and like, you're actually seeing this stuff, but nobody else can see it. You everybody feel like you're going thinks insane. Everybody else is gonna make you feel like you're going crazy. Yeah. But imagine just how creepy that is. Somebody's in the room with you asking like, what is going on? Who did this? And nobody but you could see like this weird figure in the room, in the corner of the room, just looking at you. And it's That's like, scary. it's Tib, but yeah. nobody else can see it, only you. Now for this last and final Reddit story. It's the most scariest and that's why we saved it for last. And it creeped me out. This one's called, It Was Good to See an Old Friend. Oh, when I was 37, I went to my high school reunion. I flew into the nearest airport and rented a car. About three miles outside of town, I see someone on the side of the road flagging me down. It turned out that it was one of the guys I had attended school with. I had not seen him in 20 years, but he still looked the same, maybe a little older. We got to town and I asked him if he wanted to come and have a couple drinks. He said, no, just take me home. Jim's parents had live only a few blocks from my grandmother's house and I turned into that direction but he said to take him to the outskirts of town. There was a mobile home park out there and I figured that that's probably where he lived. When we reached the end of the turn he said just drop me off here it was good to see you again and he walks off into the night. It's like an odd interaction. It is right? Like I would it's good to see get you like again. A weird vibe. She says now she goes to see her classmates they start to talk. As we're talking who's about to come to the reunion I mentioned that I had just picked up Jim three miles east of town and had dropped him off. Everyone gets quiet. Even the guy singing karaoke stops and lays down the mic my cousin goes white as a t-shirt. Barb, Jim died on the curve eight years ago. We were all at his funeral. I started to feel dizzy and I went out to the car to take some deep breaths. There on the seat is a local newspaper printed eight years previous containing Jim's obituary. I still have the paper. That gave me the what creep the saying heck? that again. I can't imagine going through something like that. Yeah. Like you thinking it's normal and then figuring out like this person the passed ghost. away a long time ago. I don't know. That's that's pretty creepy. It is. Maybe he was a lost soul. I don't yeah. know. But before we go, we do have one last story. We had posted on our Instagram for people to deal some of their most like scariest encounters with paranormal things and our manager Lexi actually sent us one so we're gonna go ahead and tell you guys that um, she said she used to live in a house that was haunted the lady that lived in the house before they bought it she had passed away in her room I would go to sleep with the radio on and my parents would turn it off when they came up to sleep for months the radio would automatically turn back on and the knob would twist and go to an oldie station our motion sensor lights in the hallways would constantly go on and off and we would be sitting in the kitchen and see our doorknob turn and the door would creep open that the is fact scary. that this like okay like this ghost she's turning it on to the oldie station she's like man yeah. i can really use some Reliving good music them. right now like even when it comes to like moving to a new house sometimes i have the like sudden urge to look up the history of that house just imagine like you looking up the history of your house and finding out that something creepy or someone creepy lived at your house 
<sighs> and then like you can't even like move out because man yeah. rent is expensive so you're yeah. like i gotta stay here but before we end off today's video guys there has been something that has been brought to our attention this video has been posted on our tiktok for over i would say it's probably gonna be two years now yeah. two three days ago we were just chilling at work it was a little bit of a slow hour and we had somebody comment on our video saying there is somebody in the back and there is like a weird dark figure it could have been a neighbor or something but it just kind of like fades away like oddly it doesn't have a shape of a human it's just like this black mist it could have been someone but what if it wasn't you know, and my mom and all of us were kind of like scared kind of like what we concluded was that maybe like he reached out to her in her dream while she was sleeping kind of like what we concluded was that maybe like he reached out to her in her dream while she was sleeping